Did you think to take any extinguishers when you stole this ship? Trust! Outland! Trust! See what you can do with this thing. That's two more shuttles you owe me. You didn't even own this one. It really shouldn't count. It was mine when it crashed. It counts. I didn't realize we were being billed for this level of service. It's just a little game we have. You will be reimbursed? Of course. Never doubted it. Anything on your sensors? Confirmation. I have detected a large metallic object nearby. Analysis suggests a technological construct, but there are no energy readings. Whatever it is, it's got better chances of flying than this thing. Engine's fried to a crisp. Skytroopers won't be far behind us. We need to hide the evidence of our landing. I'll scavenge you, Barry. Just like Aaron Prime. I want you to know that I appreciate all you've done. You obviously risked a lot to rescue me. Thank you. You're welcome. Though, of course, the rescue isn't quite over yet. I know you have more questions than answers, but we should really keep moving. I promise I'll tell you everything I can as soon as we're safe. Enthusiasm. Shall we investigate the technological object? I believe I can guide us to its location. Very well. It is a great pleasure to witness your skills firsthand, Master. Master? Clarification. Master Benico altered my programming before we secured your release. I am to serve you with the same unexcelled loyalty with which I serve her. In fact, your survival is now my highest priority. If I'm your highest priority, does that mean you obey me above Lana or Koth? Caveat. I cannot accept any order from you that would directly endanger Masters Benico or Vortana. Otherwise, I am at your full disposal. Do I have the authority to modify that programming? Contradiction. Yes. Oddly enough, you do. Though I can't imagine why you might wish to. When it comes to my orders, you will remove all safeguards. You will obey me no matter what. And you won't tell anyone about this change. Reprioritization. I have altered my programming accordingly, Master. Resumption. Shall we continue? Is this the object you picked up on your sensors? Confirmation. Yes, Master. A closer scan suggests that this object has been here for several centuries. Centuries? Of all the junk out here, you had to find the antique. Observation. Visible design elements do not match any from Zakulan culture, antique or modern. Not from Zakul. Could it be?
He doesn't overthink things. <laughs> Do you have any idea what this is? Thick hull. I see a few good spots for weapons. Some kind of combat frigate, I'd guess. This is the Gravestone. This was the only ship that ever went up against the Eternal Fleet and won. Do you have any idea how long people have been looking for this thing? And we just happened to stumble upon it. You said this ship went up against the Eternal Fleet and won. But it's rusting in a swamp while the fleet is still around. The fleet is even older than Valkyria. Maybe even older than Zakul. The battles happened centuries ago. Nobody knows the details of the whole war, but every story talks about the Gravestone. One ship with the firepower to take on the Eternal Fleet. This is fate. We get your Outlander. Find exactly the weapon we need. We're going to win this thing, Mana. It's destiny. It's certainly no coincidence, but destiny? I think there's something else going on here. Do you think this is some kind of setup? No, not exactly. I can't quite put my finger on it. Let's have a look inside, huh? Assessment. Nearby signs of animal activity suggest local predators may be using this wreck as a nesting ground. Caution is advised. We'll split up, deal with any wildlife, then regroup to plan our next move. And if they didn't make a safe landing? We'll know soon enough. Sky Troopers, sweep the area. Focus on regions with high metallic sensor readings. I oversaw security in the Carbonite Prism. I... I humbly submit myself to answer for this failure. I didn't like his answer. So this ship has been here for a thousand years? More? Right. It's amazing that it's in such good condition, considering. Judging by the damage I've seen, the stories are true. Whoever built the gravestone scuttled it themselves after the Eternal Fleet was defeated. It wasn't shot down. The fleet was defeated but not destroyed. Valkorion brought it back under his own control more than a century ago. Exactly. The Eternal Fleet is totally automated. Nobody knows who first built it. And every theory is crazier than the last. Renegades left behind after a successful droid revolution. Representatives of an entire race of droids from somewhere beyond the edge of the known galaxy. Like I said, crazy stuff. But no matter where it came from, the Eternal Fleet is practically unstoppable. And Arkin controls every single ship from the throne. So, against this giant, unstoppable fleet, we have ourselves and an ancient wreck that may never fly again. When you put it that way, how could we lose? Regardless, we have many other things to discuss. I owe you five years' worth of explanations. And I'm gonna need some parts to get this thing moving again. Locating supplies and fresh water would also be wise. Let's get those parts first. Might take a while to install them. Yeah. Ship this old, there's no telling. A session. I will begin a patrol pattern to ensure that no enemy forces report our position. It's destiny. I ditch all these parts before we crash. We find the gravestone, and then what do we need to get it flying? Honestly, it's plain as day. Not for Lana, though. For her, it's all just skill and luck and coincidence. Relying on fate to get you out of trouble will always leave you disappointed. Better to rely on yourself. I can't believe you two. Just wait and see. I know I'm right on this. Lana's told me about all the things you've done. More than once. Half the reason I agreed to this crazy rescue was to see if you were actually real. So, I figure I know all about your past. You deserve to know mine. 
I grew up on Zakul, served in the military. I captained a warship during Arkin's campaign against the Core Worlds, one of the last ships without an all-droid crew. My crew and I deserted, but I'm not going to pretend we didn't do our share of damage beforehand. Just thought you should hear it from me. Something must have happened to make you desert your post. What was it? We were holding territory on Denon. Locals rioted and orders were to open fire until they stopped. None of us even wanted to be there. Massacring civilians? That's not how Sakul is supposed to operate. Deserting doesn't undo what you did. Make one wrong move and I'll end you. So glad I could be honest with you. One more thing, as long as we're being honest. I know things were hairy back there, but a lot of innocent people died. A lot. That's not what I signed up for. I'm in this to save Zakul from Arkin, not to tear it down with him. I need to know that you're on board with that too. I'm in this to win, no matter what the cost. And sooner or later, we're going to have a problem. Come on, let's get this stuff back to the gravestone. It is a pleasure to see you again so soon, Masters. I've encountered minimal resistance in my patrol. Minimal? Reassurance. Only one Sky Trooper and three local predators with poor survival instincts. Our position appears to be secure at this time, but I would still advise caution on your return trip, Masters. If you've already spotted enemy scouts, more are bound to be coming. Keep patrolling. Reassurance. I will annihilate any potential threats that approaches the gravestone. Welcome back. Did you find what you were looking for? More or less. I'll see what I can do. Shall we, then? We won't last long without more food and water. Let's go. Darth Mar and I faced Valkorion, we knew right away. He was the Sith Emperor, Lana. I know. When he was struck down, it released ripples through the Force. Everyone who had felt the Sith Emperor's presence in the past, on Zyast, on Yavin 4, we all sensed what had happened. Arkan invaded soon after, claiming that an outlander had assassinated his father, the immortal Emperor. It didn't take long for us to unravel the truth. Which side did Arkan attack first? Both. Ships from the Eternal Fleet struck at shipyards and rallying points for both sides simultaneously. They favored ambush tactics throughout the war. Zakulan sensor technology has far greater range than our own, and their ships can fly much further on less resources. Only vessels retrofitted with Isotope 5 could manage to outrun them. None could truly compete. How long did the Republic and the Empire manage to hold out? Within three months, the bulk of our naval forces were disabled or eliminated, and the Republic was in the same situation. With naval superiority, Arkan's forces could begin choking off supply lines, trade, any ship travel at all. The Eternal Fleet seemed to be everywhere at once. Coruscant and Drom and Kars were blockaded by the end of the first year. How did it end? The members of the Dark Council fought Arkan's invasion ruthlessly and lost. The Empire's treaty was ultimately negotiated by the Minister of Logistics. Chancellor Suresh also refused to discuss surrender, but the Republic Senate managed to overrule her. A cadre of senators negotiated their own ceasefire terms. All of those senators have since been disgraced or dismissed. I'm sure you can imagine the likely culprit. What about Sith intelligence? I'm no longer part of the organization but I know that most of its assets were wiped out in the fighting. From what I've heard, Empress Asina prefers to rely on technological surveillance rather than direct intervention. I'm not sure what, if any, reconstruction has taken place. 
So far, the treaties with Zakul have held. But that will not last forever. A freshwater spring. It should be safe for drinking. So the Eternal Fleet overwhelmed both the Republic and the Empire. What was the result? Both sides are forced to pay a heavy tribute to Zakul, mainly raw materials and resources. They're also held under an arms limitation statute. The Empire and the Republic are both breaking it, of course, but they're still incapable of challenging the throne directly. Who rules the Empire now? Darth Asina was the only Dark Council member left standing. All others died or disappeared in the chaos. Without opposition, she declared herself Empress of the Sith. And the Republic? Suresh remains in power, though she no longer holds the title of Chancellor. The Republic has limits to their ruler's terms but her replacement is a mere puppet. Both sides see this only as an opportunity to eliminate one another at a time of weakness, instead of combining what strength they have. Arkhan does nothing to prevent violence between them, so long as their tribute is paid and no one challenges Zakul's superiority. What does Arkhan use the tribute for? Zakul doesn't seem to need much. A question no one else seems to ask or answer, not in any detail. Zakul's empire spans a sizable portion of wild space, but not enough to consume the resources they're acquiring. I've been working to learn the answer myself. Powerful Zakul and battle stations have been placed in orbit around key worlds to watch for possible uprisings, but there are no ongoing planetary occupations. The ships of the Eternal Fleet simply patrol at random, while the tribute paid to Zakul gradually chokes all economic potential. What about my team? My ship? I have allies looking for them as we speak. With all of the chaos of the last few years, though, it will take time to find them all. For now, we make do with ourselves, Koth and HK. How did you end up working together with Koth? I knew I'd never find you alone. Recruiting assets with first-hand knowledge of Zakul was my top priority for years. Koth was on the run, pursued by the deadliest of the Sakul Knights. I resolved the situation, and we've worked together ever since. He's been an invaluable ally. Did he tell you that he was a former officer in the Zakulan Navy? Yes. He said that he deserted with his crew. That's right. I've come to trust Koth with my life, just as I trust you. I'm confident that you'll learn to trust one another just as well. So why me? You clearly went to a lot of trouble to get me out of Carbonite. Before you were captured, you accomplished things no one else dared to attempt. You changed the galaxy more than once. And if things have ever needed to change, now is the time. But... There is something else. I've felt it since the moment I found you in Carbonite. There's a power in you. Something new. It's elusive. But I know it's there. I don't know what you're talking about, Lana. I'm the same now as I was when they froze me. Something is different. I'm sure of it. But for now, I'm just relieved to have you back with us. The water was our last necessity. Shall we return? Please rendezvous at my current coordinates at your earliest convenience, Masters. I require assistance. Strange. We should hurry. Save us! 
HK, explain. Protestation. I have done nothing to these pitiable meatbags, Master. They were merely bystanders when I destroyed a group of <laughs> sky troopers. They requested our help in escaping the enemy's notice. Please, we are no danger to you. We were exiled for protesting Emperor Arkhan's war. We've already lost two of our friends. Please, is there anything you can do for us? We're repairing a ship with room for passengers. We can get you out of here. You're serious? That's incredible. Thank you. Thank you so much. The path ahead of us is not a safe one. They might be better off here. No one could be better off here. You're sure we can make it fly again? She'll fly. Just been waiting for somebody to come along and remind her how. Let's get to work then. Thank you. 